What's up guys, Gun for Newbies back. Um, so today I wanted to upload the most important and I guess most exciting video of the purpose of the P320 new upper that I have, the ported one. So um, before we start the video, I wanna thank all the new subscribers, people that continuously come back, contribute, and also participate with what they find whenever they do, um, you know, their their personal experiences with shooting firearms. So we really appreciate you guys chiming in, helping out the channel. We're almost to 500 subs, so that's really the goal. And then to start a Patreon so that we can get more stuff for the channel, including um, holsters. I really want to be um, big on holsters, uh, longevity reviews. Um, and things like that. So <clears throat> for the purpose of today's video, um, I have the two guns that I reviewed. Now, the reason why I did this is because a lot of people tend to complain when picking your gun that P320 suck because of the higher bore axis, which it does have. Um, but stay tuned in the video and I'll explain a little bit more regarding that. Um, but the reason I chose the Glock um, is it is a very low bore axis. It's one of the lowest bore axis you can get um, other than like a crazy super expensive gun that has weird retractable sides and whatnot. But nevertheless, so these are the two uh, guns that I picked for the video. So Glock 19X. Now this has nothing done to it other than just sights. Um, I did a trigger job in it myself. Uh, I sent it to SRB Customs for the stippling. The stippling does help the recoil management on it. I could notice a very big difference. It was very hot in the range, and you'll see that in the footage, um, where I was constantly readjusting my hands with the SIG. Not that the texture is bad. The texture is actually really, really good on the SIG. However, it is not as good as the you know stippling. What they're doing is they're burning the polymer to create a lot of big grooves, so that way you can really get your your finger your uh, skin in the the crevices, and it doesn't move. It is a huge upgrade. I personally love it, um, and it's really made me you know consider getting this one stippled. Uh, it is really really good already. It's just not to the same caliber of this, and I really um, it doesn't really bother me how tough or rough the texture is. However. I did notice a big difference when my hands were physically sweating because it was hot and I had a hoodie on um, and the range is just hot. So you'll see that in the video. Uh, but before we get into that, let's look at the gun. So this is my Glock 19X just for the purposes of the video. Now this gun is loaded, so I'm not going to flag myself, flag anybody, anything like that. Just wanted to show you really quick. And we're going right back in the holster. This is also the We The People holster that I really dislike. So as you can see, It just doesn't fit too well. There's a lot of room in there. Again, the gun's loaded, so I'm not gonna flag myself, but just to show you guys, uh, I actually added, I drilled through the side to add this uh, extra nut washer here um, just to add some more retention because this was like moving all the way right and left and they only give you one when it comes up. Anyways, there is a review that I have on the Weed the People holsters. I do not um, think that unless you're capable of doing that, that it's well with your case. I do like the actual print on it. Um, but I wish it was just done a little bit better. I think the fitment could be significantly better in my opinion. Um, it also does pinch me half the time on the back side because the, it, you know, it seems to really come up here. I don't know. It's just something about this whole track. I just don't like the fitment. It seems like it protrudes way too much. I have the light all the way before his back and there's a huge gap in the front. So it's bigger than what it needs to be. It doesn't cover all the way up. So it's easier to pinch yourself um, when reholstering it. Just things like that, you know, just it could be better long story short so this is my uh, m18 uh with a x a x not an x5 it's a legion grip module for the medium uh size there you can see the m and it is the carry length so this is what is typically found on the x uh the m18 not the x i don't know why i keep saying x um works holster so this is the works holster i believe it's the m6 option in the waistband with a wing and then it also comes optic cut or uh, optic cut and you can get a um uh, a light added to it so um this is uh, i run the same thing the tlr7 so as you can see it's tlr7a if you want to get technical so this guy's loaded as well. We'll render him safe. Okay. So now, um, overall thoughts on this. Um, the it it's it's amazing. It really is. I really don't want to undersell it. I don't want to overpromise it. But for me, it was like just a dream, a dream to shoot. It really was. Um, I did notice, and you can see. Uh, 
looks like. Yeah. So I did notice, and part of it was the fact that the barrel comes like drenched in lube. So it was like picking up all the dust and the propellant and anything it could possibly find. Um, so it was really mucking up the sights, um, which to me isn't really that big of a deal because I actually do better. Um, and that is a lesson learned. Um, which I'll do in a different video for your site, whatever site arrangement you want to pick. Um, but this one, I wish I would have went all blacked out because that's what I have on my um, Staccato P that is OptiCut as well. However, I get it if the back, if these aren't working, then if your site's not working, which you know your RMR is extremely reliable, I'm sure it will. Um, it's important that you have an easy site picture, which these present. However, I noticed after shooting it, um, maybe 25 shots, this got very dirty. You got closer to like 50 shots, it was pretty much covered. So you weren't able to tell it was blacked out anyway. So I wish I would have just got the blacked out um, to begin with. Uh, I guess in a night setting, it would be nice. Uh, and you can always clean your sights in between if you ever were to, you know, have like a, a point where you could, like let's say you were in an altercation or whatever shootout, and then you got to a safe place and you changed around cleaned your site, you'd be back with night sight. So I guess it's not a negative as big as I'm making it to be, but it is a pet peeve for me, a um, bit of an OCD thing. And uh, so that, and you can clear it like I showed you, it's still dirty. So um, I'll have to keep that in mind to clean the site better than what I'm typically used to. So nevertheless, functionality of it was amazing. Um, I wanted to show you guys how it settled. So we put about 100, 100 maybe 125 rounds through it, uh, through the range. So as you can see, this is actually a little bit of the debris from the, or the propellant from the, from the cartridge. So it's got a little bit of that. Your wear marks, it does have a little bit, uh, uh does have quite a bit of wear, I would say. Um, but the ammo that I was shooting, I also noticed was very messy and I had the same problem in the Glock 19X. So I won't blame it all on the barrel. However, the difference in, in recoil that I felt from this gun non-ported to ported is so immensely worth it that I personally will put up with the dirtiness even if it does seem to stay. But I know it was a combination of over the the extreme amounts of, of lubricant that came from the manufacturer and their job is to make sure it's lubed up when you you know first put it in the gun. So they did an awesome job. They quality control it. They do a really, really awesome job. These are some of the cleanest port cuts I've ever seen. So I'm not gonna knock the quality control. That is 11 out of 10, guys. And again, I'm not trying to overpromise you or anything like that. This is my only upper I've ever gotten from Norso, but so far from what I've seen, it works incredibly well. And incredibly well is an understatement. Um, so in my personal opinion, before we get to the video of the shooting um, you know, comparison, I will tell you, this probably had maybe 30% less recoil than the Glock 19. Um, and I will tell you, that is just, you know, as far as the uh, recoil impulse. Now, the higher bore axis is something that what people regard to. So when you're holding the Glock, the slide reciprocates right above, like where this is pretty much. So you can almost sometimes pinch yourself. And I have before when shooting it because I get such a high grip on it. And this one, you obviously can't because it's got the beaver tail. So as you can see, there's a considerable amount of room there before it comes back. Now, the high bore axis is something that a lot of SIG um, influencers, or I guess not SIG influencers, but YouTube influencers in the gun industry will complain about. There's a lot of SIG guys that don't mind it. And personally, I wish that I would not have let a lot of people influence my um, personal thoughts on that because when I had my M18, I loved how it shot out of the box. I liked it. It had, did have a little bit heavier of a recoil spring than what I would have liked, but nevertheless, it really ate up the recoil. It functioned really well, and I changed it out hunting for a lighter slide to have less mass up top, which is why I switched to the Zev. I got a better textured grip module, which was the uh, Wilson Combat Lower. However, with it being thinner, I felt more recoil. And also with the lighter slide, I felt more recoil as well. So um, sometimes less re reciprocating mass is not a better thing for you, uh, depending on your gun application. So that was something that I wish I would have just, you know, 
enjoyed the gun a little bit more how it was. I thought the iron sights on it were really good. Um, the trigger was a little bit heavier than what I wanted, so I ended up putting the uh, skeletonized trigger that SIG sells, and it's been, you know, obviously just as reliable. There's no difference. It's a SIG OEM product, and more importantly, it lightened up the trigger probably by a pound and a half, maybe two, and um, so I really, really liked it. Now, in terms of reliability, we saw no malfunctions. Um, it fed perfectly everything extracted fine um i was able to actually track the optic very easy which i'm not able to do with lighter non-ported or non-compensated guns so and that's another video on on choosing an optic i will up, upload in the future so that way you guys can understand what i'm meaning by that again this is contoured to new shooters if you know everything about there is to guns and you've shot eighty-five thousand rounds in the last three years this material is not for you however i will say i saw no signs of issues i got locked back on my um you know at the end of the magazine which is a promising sign so the purpose of lock back is the end of, edge of the magazine follower when this is completely empty is the black follower that comes up there is a ledge and it'll push up the corner that's inside of here um, to lock the slide up so what that's doing is that's letting you know that the slide is going all the way possibly as far back as it can obviously the slide can go back a little bit further to release it but it's going back far enough to give you proper ejections and a lock back so that's why it's important to know what that is now some Sometimes your grip can interfere with that, um, which mine does on the Glock. I never get Glock back on the Glock. However, for this gun, since it has this, I tend to, and it has a higher um, area for the um, slide lever lock or mag release, whatever, slide, slide release, um, slide stop, whatever you want to call it. I know there's a lot of debates on that, but I don't have that issue with the SIG and even with the loss in velocity because that's what people's main concern is, is this going to lose enough velocity and no longer be reliable, no longer have uh, good ejections and no longer have lockback. That was not the case with this one. It made it, now in terms of recoil impulse, it is, in my opinion, I enjoyed the recoil impulse better on the M18 originally the way I got it. When I changed it, I felt like I increased 20% of the of the recoil impulse maybe 30 and so that's what i'm going off of is like this to the other one this to this one this one has like 20 percent less than this one maybe even more um you know and it's been several days since i've shot them but you'll see in the video i mean there's you can see the muzzle flip but the, the front sight essentially does not move from where it started to where it retracts and, and resets i mean it's pretty amazing i'm able to track like i said the red dot the whole entire time which is a feeling that i've only ever gotten from my staccato because it's so light and recoil it i mean you can literally shoot it and see the dot the whole entire time now i do so sometimes i did lose it just for a little bit and it's just because this window is really really hard to pick up the rmr is not as big as what it really should be for competition shooting but i bought this specifically for or the fact that it is my carry gun and I want it to be reliable if I drop it, if I bang it up against something, if I'm using it to rack, uh, you know, another round on, you know, in case I'm hurt or whatever, I wanted something completely durable and that I know that this is it. So I'm really 10 out of 10 pleased with the, um, even more than that. I mean, it's really hard to say. I mean, really from my Zev upper to this, I feel it has half the recoil um, and it's so much easier to track, so much more enjoyable to shoot. It's so much quicker. I physically went through the time lapse in the video to track how consistent the shots were like in between and this one was shooting almost twice as fast in between shots as this one i know it's hard to tell from the video but when i'm using movie maker you can physically see the distance in between the audio files like where it's shooting where it picks up the audio from shooting and you can see there is a noticeable gap uh, in between the shots that were being fired through this through that and that was not my intention i was just shooting how my re it was not an accuracy test it was a recoil test and reliability test which this one just soared with flying colors so um and you know that's just is where it is i'm going to continue to make videos on this with it being so low in uh round count i want to make sure that if i'm telling you guys it's an awesome product that it's not just an awesome product for 400 rounds or 500 rounds i want it to be amazing through you know the whole entire time of your ownership and so with that being said you know keep uh, this one in mind we're going to get some higher round counts again i really would like to put these through some higher round counts and that's my plan to start a patreon so that we can get more ammo and get back out to the range more frequently um so all in all 
you know, this has just been an amazing build. This one's been my favorite SIG that I've built, especially with how, um, you know, the, the capability now. I, I have the confidence in this for being a carry gun, a home defense gun, and um, a competition gun per se. I mean, I don't compete or anything like that, but it, it's very quick. I really like it. Um, I do plan to put a slightly um, lighter uh, trigger, uh, trigger kit in it, um, and I'll have to look and see what the manufacturer was. I, I researched them from several hours, and I based it not on, uh, on total decrease in spring weight, but I rated it on who had the most reviews with the most reliability. So that's what I did. And I did order one. So when I get that put in, I will physically show you guys what I put and I would try to get a trigger gauge to show you like kind of like a before and after thing. So in a different video, but nevertheless, enjoy the shooting video. But before we go into that, I want to thank everybody again. Be sure to like, share and support the channel in any way that helps me get more um you know activity on youtube and also get higher in the search results for people so i can get more views and subscribers so thanks again and appreciate y'all stay tuned